Hello! Welcome back to Drink, Read, Fabio! I'm Sophia Kayapis. And I'm Kate Brimmer. And we are your hosts, as always. Yes! Welcome back! <laughs> We've been off for a week, so we're a little bit. We're coming back after a little bit of a break. Yes. But this is just a reminder, this is a podcast where we recommend a book that we love, mm -hmm. while the other one talks about a book we think is a little bit silly or a little bit sassy. Yes, hence the Fabio in the title. Of course, so let's get right on into let's it. Let's get right into it. Kate is recommending the book for this week. Yes, it is my turn. So as you guys can all see on YouTube, the book I'm recommending this week is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. You so know. this book is a fan fave that yeah. you all probably knew was going to be in the podcast eventually. It is all over book talk. The part that we went to had a whole table of just Colleen Hoover books. Yes. She is popping off. She's popping off right now. And now it has made its way onto my bookshelf. Yes. So before I get into this, I want to let you all know that this book does touch on abusive relationships. And if you are triggered by this, pick up a different book. This is not the one for you. Yes. Just so you know. All right. Yeah. Let's get into it. So this book is about Lily Bloom. <laughs> Cutie girl. Yes, you heard that right. Lily Bloom's parents wanted their kid to suffer. They named her Lily Blossom Bloom. Oh, Blossom's middle name. Blossom's middle name. That's unfortunate. <laughs> she grew up as an only child with an abusive father who ruins her first relationship and first love to this boy named Atlas. Mm -hmm. okay. The book opens up right after her father passes away. And she is supposed to do his obituary. Her mom begs her, please do an obituary for him, and says, all you gotta do is name five things that you love about your father. So she goes up to his funeral and says, here are five things I love about my father. And leaves. <gasps> oh no. And just runs away and goes back to her Ooh. home. Yeah. Because he was so terrible to her and her mother. Yeah. She leaves the funeral and goes to a random rooftop in Boston where she now lives to look at the city skyline and just kind of process and be brief. Yeah. There, she meets Ryle Kinsey, which, can we talk about his name? Yeah. It's Ryle. Don't love that. Kinsey? Ryle. Like mm -hmm. Kyle, but with an R. All right, yes. Colleen, pop off. The most handsome guy she has ever seen. So he's like really hot. Of course, always. And he tells her that he only does one night stands, but he thinks she's really hot and would love for her to join him in a one night stand. She's like, I'm not really that kind of girl, mm -hmm. even though you're really hot. And he kind of makes it with her and she's like, ooh, maybe I do want to try this out. And then he gets a call from his work because he's a neurosurgeon. Oh, so okay. he was on call and he's rushed to the hospital. Um, they then meet again through the flower shop that she opens because she loves gardening and has always dreamed about opening a flower shop. Mm -hmm. So they meet through that and begin a dreamy relationship until Atlas suddenly reappears in her life, her childhood first love. Oh my so gosh. that's kind of the gist about it that you have to read to find out more. Ooh. This is a beautiful book on love and drama that is not only sweet and entertaining, but gut-wrenching yeah. and it has you questioning your own morals, which is very interesting. Interesting. I highly recommend this book and really just loved every page of it. Amazing. Yeah, so that's this book. So because she owns a flower shop, I thought yes. it would be super fun to create a lavender lemonade. Because yes. lavender is one of my favorite fla for floral flavors. Me too. In drinks. So I wanted to kind of add that in as a cute little summer floral shop drink. Yeah, I serve it in my floral shop. Sure, in, in your serve it in your floral shop. Yeah. <laughs> when I have floral shop one day, this is gonna be. The You're drink. also gonna be serving alcohol. Yes, yes. this one. Just this drink. Just this. One. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with some rum. Mm -hmm. Shocking you all, guys. We're changing it up before you come for us for only using vodka. Yeah. You can't come for us anymore. We're gonna do two shots per drink, so four shots of rum. For two drinks. Don't do, I mean, unless you really want to get crazy. 
Mm. But I don't recommend doing four shots for one drink. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe you're really trying to get it on. Yeah, trying to party. But that's not really my vibe. No, we wouldn't be able to make it through this podcast if we did a four shot. We're drinking on our boo tays. All right. Oh, what I'm going to do uh, equal parts lemonade. Let me give it a shake. Good. Yes. We're going to do then four ounces of limonade. Limonade. Wait. I love lemonade. Me too. I think lemon is the best mixer. Lemonade? Anything, well, anything lemon flavored. Oh, lemon yeah. juice, lemon in general, is just the best to put with alcohol. I it think really it hides kinda, everything. Yeah. It really masks that strong flavor. <laughs> yes. With and another then, strong flavor. We're going to do two tablespoons of lavender syrup, which I made homemade. And it's really easy to make simple syrup. I think I touched on this before. Yeah. But all you have to do for it is a cup of sugar, a cup of water, and then I did three tablespoons of dry lavender, which you can find in the spice aisle of any grocery store. You boil it until you see bubbles. Obviously, that's how you boil things. <laughs> the minute that it starts boiling, you put it on low, let it simmer for 15 minutes, and then let it steep for another 30 or so. Mm -hmm. And then you strain it, and you're ready to go. And you're ready to go. Super simple. Lavender. We're doing that. Shaky, shaky. Shake, 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 Yeah. Yeah. Did it. Yay. All right. Give it a tasty. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Sorry, I was She always I'm just like, ready? Go. I know. It's kind of like sweet, like kind of has like a honeyish taste. I know. I was expecting the lavender to be a lot stronger, but I'm kind of happy it's not. It's like it hits you on the head. head. It hits you on the back of your throat. Yeah. Not your face. Okay, perfect. Well, you guys go make your drink and pause the show and then come back and get ready for my book. Woohoo! All right. So, I picked another very popular TikTok <gasps> book. Oh, but this book has very, very mixed reviews. Either people are literally obsessed with this book or people hate it. Like the people that I watch on YouTube, like the book t YouTubers, hated this book. Really? So I was like, I have to read it for yeah. the podcast and s tell you guys See? what I'm excited. I thought. So it is. The Spanish Love Deception. Ooh. Have you heard of this one? I have not actually. <gasps> okay, so this is like literally all over TikTok. Everyone's obsessed uh -huh. or not. Oh, so I'm going to tell controversial. you. Controversial. It is very controversial right now. So I'm going to want to tell you guys about this book. The setting is New York City <laughs> at an architecture firm, which is hilarious because my last one was also an architecture firm and the book opens with the line I'll be your date to the wedding oh mm -hmm. which is said by our leading man Aaron he is talking to his work colleague Catalina and the story is told from her point of view mm -hmm. and this book is like that grumpy sunshine trope so Aaron and Catalina have been at odds ever since they met mm -hmm. They do not get along. They're always bickering and, you know, saying things back and forth to each other. So it was quite shocking and out of the blue for Erin to be offering to be Catalina's date for her sister's wedding. Because not only did she not ask him, the wedding is all the way in Spain where she's from. Whoa! So it's just like, what? And she didn't even ask? Yeah. No, so he overhears her talking to her bestie, Rosie, about the wedding at work. They're talking uh -huh. at work. And how she needs a date. And he just pops in and is like, I'll do it. Weird. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, uh, I don't want your help, but thanks. And he's like, well, I overheard that you're the maid of honor and your ex is the best man. That's the ex. Because his brother, the ex's brother, is marrying her sister. Oh, so they were dating first, and yeah. then they met, started dating, and then they broke up? Yeah. Yikes. 
and her ex is also engaged. No. Yeah. And yes. that she already told her family that her American boyfriend is coming. And he's like, kind of sounds like you need my help. And she's like, uh, no, I will not need your help. I'll find anybody else but you. Yeah. Right. And this was like the first part of the book. Okay. So we haven't really established the characters. So I was just kind of like, from a writing perspective, it was just kind of strange. Sudden. I was just like, what's going on? What's going on? Why are you just throwing us into this already? Mm -hmm. We have nothing to go off of. Yeah, it's pretty sudden. Yeah, but okay. And he's like, okay, well, the offer still stands, and you let me know if you can't find anyone else. Um, and Catalina's talking to her mom on the phone, and he's asking, is asking all about her boyfriend that is coming, and she's like, what's his name? You haven't told me yet. And she panics and says, Aaron. <gasps> his name? Yeah. And now she's like, shit, so what do I do? After work that day, it is pouring rain and Catalina has to walk a good ways to get to the subway. And she's walking miserably with no umbrella, just soaking wet. And Aaron pulls up in his like hotshot car and he's like, get it, Catalina. <laughs> After being stubborn and like arguing with him, she finally gets in the car and he's like begging her to let him be her date. Why? And I was just like, I don't understand. Like, this Why is the beginning care? of the book. Why does he care so much? Because all she's told us about him is that she doesn't like him. And he like, like, she's her. confused too, but like, he doesn't like her either. Yeah, so why do you even care? Yeah, it was just kind of weird. I don't know why the author did that. Anyway. And he's like, I need you to be my date to something as well. Ah, uh, there it is. But won't tell her what until she agrees to let him be her date. Okay. So eventually she says, fine. The event is a fundraiser and he was invited to be auctioned off to be someone's date, which he's done multiple times oh, in the past. Oh, that's such a weird thing. Since he used to be a big football star, apparently. All right. And he says, you are going to bid on me so I don't have to go on a date with anyone else because okay. I really don't want to do this anymore. Um, and that's why you're here. That's fair. Yeah. Once the bidding commences, this other lady is trying to outbid Catalina for Aaron. But Catalina ends up winning, of course. Does he pay for it? Yeah. Okay, good. Aaron is obviously happy and asks her to dance with him. And they have a moment at the, while they're dancing. The gala. Yeah. And then they head home. After this, he's like being all uber flirty. Mm -hmm. It's just like weird because just uh -huh. because they had a moment, what makes him think that he can just start being like flirty out of nowhere? It was just weird to me. I'm like, why is he being like this? It's too mm -hmm. much. The next day, their boss announces that Aaron is going to be taking over his position and become Catalina's boss. So Aaron's going to become Catalina's boss. Oh, that's kind so of she's awesome. like, well, crap. Mm -hmm. um, I can't take my future boss uh, as my date to the wedding because that's going to mess everything up at work. Yeah. So she goes to talk to him and she calls it off. And he's like, did you find someone else? Like, please, let me take you. Like, freaking out. And she's like, nope, sorry. I don't want to ruin my career. Yeah, that makes sense. And he's like, fine. I'm patient. <laughs> what? I was like, that okay, doesn't make any sense. <laughs> patient about what? Like, Being her? a fake date? Her, I guess. Does he like her all of a sudden? Well, he does like her. Oh. Obviously. Or he wouldn't care that much. But it's like, why did you just go from being, like, kind of a dick to her all the time? To all of a sudden liking her? Yeah. Anyway, two weeks later, Catalina hasn't been eating much because she wants to be skinny for the wedding. <laughs> Healthy. Yes. Um, and she's been working all day and ends up fainting. Mm. She wakes up in Aaron's arms and he mm. takes care of her. And tries to get her to eat and she's like i'm fine and he literally says no you're a dumbass <laughs> i was like whoa okay my dude like so a dumbass you a dumbass you you really feel exactly he puts her in his car to take her home and she falls asleep in the car when she wakes up he is talking her sister on the phone about the wedding and about catalina and she's like, what the? That's so overstepping. 
And he's like, she was freaking out. She hadn't heard from you all day and called, was calling a million times. So I felt like I had to pick up to make sure she knew that you were alive. Okay. Um, apparently, she knew my name and said that she was looking forward to seeing me at the wedding. What's that about? <sighs> <laughs> and then she's like, well, I kind of told them that my boyfriend's name was Aaron. So, yeah. And he's like, then he starts basically begging her again that he's like, please let me go with you. I will make it worth your while. She says yes. Good. And he takes her to go get his, her favorite food, which is a cute moment. That's cute. Which she didn't tell him what her favorite food is. He just like listens to all these things and knows them about her. That's cute. Which I was like, okay, that's cute. Um, then they fly to Spain. Great. On the plane, she orders a chocolate cake. Mm -hmm. And she has him on her face, and he does the thing where he's like, let me, let me get that for you. And then licks it off his finger! I hate him. <laughs> They're not dating! I even hate that when people do that and you are dating. Like, yeah, that was in my, on my, don't lick it. Yeah, I just, why? They haven't even kissed, they haven't even hugged, they haven't hold hands. He's like, really, he's like, hold on, let me get that. Ugh. Lick it off my finger. I just thought that was really strange. I was like, that's too much, sir, why are you... Doing that. Like, why did he think that she'd be okay with that? I don't know. The whole time of this book, he's just like assuming she's okay with all these things. Anyway. It seems like it moves very quickly. Yeah. They arrive in Spain, and of course, he's already charming the pants off everyone in her family. Mm -hmm. They are staying at an apartment, her parents own, mm -hmm. and there are two bedrooms, which is like perfect. We don't have to stay in the same room. We're fine. They go to the smaller bedroom and has a twin bed, and she's like, oh, you can't sleep in here. You won't fit on that bed. You're too big. So of course, he's so tall. And she's like, I'll take this room. Oh. You go take the bigger bed. Love and he's that. like, no, it's fun. I can sleep here. And tries to prove it to her by laying on the bed, and the bed breaks. Uh. So now they have to sleep in the same bed. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Later that day, they have to participate in the wedding cup, which is a soccer game mm -hmm. between Team Bride and Team Room. That's kind of cute. Yes. The sister orders shirts for everyone, but the guy's shirts come in too small. Yeah. And I thought the way that this was going to go was that the boys were going to have to wear crop tops, which I thought was going to be really funny. really funny. But then the sister's like, boys, you're going to play shirtless, yeah, of course. And of course, Adam has the body of a Greek god, and he just takes off his shirt, and I was like, what the? Of course. <laughs> And I'm like, um, Catalina, and she's like, I didn't know about this either. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I totally knew this. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's, he's so hot. Yeah, Joking. and she's like trying to like concentrate. They play the game, and towards the end, they are, they are tied. And there's this funny part where Catalina's sister is like, what are we going to do? We're going to lose. Quick, take off your shirt. <laughs> and Catalina's like, hell no. And her sister's like, but your boobies will just back to a boyfriend. <laughs> the boobies, though. So Catalina is like, we're not gonna lose. And on the, way, on the way to steal the ball from Aaron, but she trips. No. And he scoops her up before she falls on his shoulder. That's hot. And shoots instead. Oh. And then they have a moment. Because she's like on his body. Yeah, and he's all so ready. And he's and shirtless. <laughs> Then they all head off to have dinner and go to the club and party. At the club, Catalina gets hella drunk. Of course. And overwhelmed. So she runs outside and he runs after her with water. He takes care of her outside and she's like, I need to know the truth why you weren't a football player anymore. Like she looked it up and his career is just like amazing. It's like bound for greatness and nothing. Yeah. And she's like, what happened? And he says... Well, here's the story. My dad was a huge football coach and coached me as soon as I came out of the womb to be a football player. Like, that was my destiny. Uh-huh. But when he was in college, his mom died from cancer. Sad. And football just didn't seem important anymore. And so he quit, and that meant that him and his dad lost the relationship they had. Because they didn't have this thing bringing them together. Mm -hmm. And also, his dad was, like, depressed because his mom died. Mm -hmm. Um... So, you know, they have a moment because he shared this like, deep thing with her. Yeah. They go back to their room in the apartment and he's like, tell me what you were thinking. You can trust me. <laughs> and she's like, I don't know how. 
And he's like, close your eyes. And he starts seducing her. Whoa. Yeah, and I'm gonna redo this. She says, what are we doing? Is this still pretending? <laughs> and he says, would that make you feel better? I'll pretend a little longer if that's what you need. And she says, yes. Good girl. And then she tries to open her eyes and he says, keep them closed. We'll play this game a little longer for practice purposes. I can show you exactly what it would be like if you were really mine. <laughs> I do this all the time. If you were mine, you'd crave this. You'd welcome this. You would want it. <laughs> that he's like I'm going to kiss you which also why is he like announcing it yeah I will kiss you now I'm going to kiss you now <laughs> he says here. I'm going to kiss you and she's like please Aaron and then they get interrupted by a noise <gasps> no and so it kind of ruins the mood and he says when I kiss you you'll know it's real okay and she's like they sleep in the same bed. They so can't kiss that. now? Nope, they don't kiss. No, I was just kind of like, why can't they kiss now? Why did that one little noise have to interrupt everything? Yeah. <laughs> or why couldn't she be like, please kiss me? And then he's like, I'm, I'm going to wait to kiss you till you know it's real. Like, why did he go, yeah. I'm going to kiss you now? Please. Actually, no. I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it. I'm going to wait until you know that I love you. The next day at dinner with the entire family, everyone is like, I'm so glad you found someone. Catalina, it makes me able to rest easy knowing you have someone to take care of you. She gets overwhelmed, like it makes her upset, of course, because she's lying to everyone, and she goes to the bathroom. When she leaves the bathroom, she bumps into her ex. No. And he's like, are you okay? I understand if you're upset. Aaron is just like, kind of, boring like it's kind of stuffy and she's like okay what it has nothing to do with him and then he just like continues to like underhandedly insult her Erin notices she's upset when she comes back and comforts her and asks her what happened between them and now they're in the bedroom mm. and she tells the story that her ex was her professor in college when she was a sophomore oh they started dating once she completed his class it was like okay they hung out outside of school, but eventually students found out and started saying that's how she aced his class and that she was a whore and all this mean stuff about her well, and, sucks. you know, that she was using sex to get, get, what get what she wanted in school and stuff. So he breaks up with her because he couldn't take all the drama and, like, didn't want to help her through it. He was just like, I can't deal with this and breaks up with her. So that's why she took the job in America, because she didn't want to be looked at with pity from her family. It's so messed up. Yeah, it's messed up. And Aaron is all sweet about it and comforts her. He's really great. The next day is the wedding. At the reception, the sister has a kiss cam. Are we at a sporting event? Yeah. I was like, mm, this is really weird. weird. I've never heard of that, but okay. So it's like a camera is going around, like landing on couples at the wedding. Yeah. And Aaron is like panicking because he's like, I don't want her first kiss to be like this. Yeah. And so he grabs her and like takes her out of the room. He's like, we need to get away. And he's like, I don't want our first kiss to be like that. Yeah. Do you understand that this is real now? That I really like you? And mm -hmm. she's like, yes, kiss me. And they just full on make out. Like, make out. He lifts her up around, like, she's straddling. And, like, anyone can come out at any time. And he's, he's like, oh. Yeah, he's like, oh. And they're, like, making out. And this is when he starts calling her baby. And then continues to call her baby throughout the book. And that's when I... Checked out. Tried to turn out the baby. Because the lines weren't terrible, but the baby... I just couldn't take the baby. No. I hate baby. <laughs> it just made everything worse. Like, baby, do you trust me? Like, Ugh. Kill me, kill me. No, 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 no. Let me hold you like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> After the wedding, they go back to the room and have sex. Ooh, yeah. During sex, he says this. And I... Oh, no. 
let me just say this. The sex scene wasn't that bad. Yeah. It was it was fine. It was it good. good. It was good. It was dirty. But like, it's good. And then he says this. I want to feel you milking me, baby. No. 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 I hated that. I hate, 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 hate that with a passion. Oh my god. I want to feel you milking me, baby. I was on my house. Sophia says milk. Milk. I know. Oh gosh. Let's just like. Drink to that. Yeah, Cheers. let's drink to that because everyone makes fun of me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was just terrible though. I hate it when that happens. I've read some books that say that and I'm like, Bleh. you've heard that before? I've never heard that in my life and it I just sucks. wanted to kill myself. It's disgusting. Okay. The next day, they fly back to New York and they go to his apartment and have sex again. Nice. And at this point, everything is real. Uh -huh. Like, they're basically dating, they've shared their feelings, everything's really they're cute and go. sweet and like, it, it's like for real now. Yeah. They go get tacos Look after they have sex. And someone from work sees them. Mm -hmm. eek, eek, eek. Her so life is being repeated all over again. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I get it. First day back at work, Catherine is having lunch with her bestie and like telling her all about the things that went on. And this horrible misogynistic guy that works for them, Good. works with them, is like, I see you getting cozy with the boss. Like talking down to her, like she's sleeping her way to the top. Yeah. She freaks out, of course, and tells Aaron she can't be with him because she doesn't want it to be a repeat of last time and she really wants to be taken seriously for who she is and how hard she works and not because she's in a relationship with her boss. Yeah. That's she hard. fights for her, but eventually she's like, I'm sorry, I can't, and she leaves. Aww. She doesn't see him at work for four days after that. He's not there. Mm -hmm. She gets called into the HR lady's office and she thinks it's going to be about them dating and she's going to get in trouble. But it's actually about the jerk guy and how the HR lady's like, I know he harassed her and other people have reported him from your job and everyone's on your side. We all want to get him fired because yeah. this is not okay. And she's like, everyone likes me. You don't know? He's in Seattle. His dad has cancer and he's in critical condition. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, poor guy. Both parents. So much cancer. I know. So she flies to Seattle but doesn't know what hospital the dad is at. So she goes to like three different hospitals until she finds him. She finds him. They make up. Everything's great again. She meets his dad and his dad is like, this is your Thea, which is what his dad used to call Aaron's mom. So he's like, this is her. This is it. A year later, the dad is still dying, Aww. but he's still alive. Well, that's good. But they know he's going to die eventually. But Catalina's whole family is coming to the U.S. so they can meet. So eventually, you know, they'll get married and the whole family will know each other even if he passes away. And Aww. that's it. That's the end. Yay. Yay. That is the Spanish love deception. What More about? like the Spanish love erection. Oh, <laughs> I was ready for that one. That was good. <laughs> so what were yes. your thoughts? Um, there were a lot of cute moments. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of really cringy moments. And like, I try not to take them too seriously in books like this. Because, you know... I don't really care that much if like it's supported, but it wasn't really. Yeah. And I feel like this book could be a lot shorter. Mm -hmm. Like there are a lot of moments where I was like, this didn't need to be in there. And the beginning was kind of weird because it was just like she opened up with the topic of the wedding. Yeah. But then all these other things happened before the wedding, and you're like, wait, why did you open up with that? And then like now we're backpedaling and learning more about them and like now we're like establishing the relationship like I kind of mm. wish she I guess she was trying to draw the reader in but I kind of wish she would have established them first and then him randomly being like you know you. I'll take you to the wedding and she's like what it seemed very abrupt from the beginning yeah As in, why at the this point what I think is why even make them hate each other at the beginning 
Yeah. Because it seemed like that went away so quickly at the beginning. Exactly. So why couldn't they have just been co-workers? Yeah. And he overheard her and they were like friends or whatever. And he overheard and was like, hey, I'd love to help you out. Yeah, because it was weird because he's supposed to be like this grumpy guy that like they don't get along. And then when they went to Spain, like it literally all disappeared. Like he wasn't rude to her at all. He was like super kind and like did everything for her. Yeah. It was just kind of like, even okay, before that, after why the fundraiser, was, yeah. he was so nice. Exactly. So there's no growth there. Okay, I have some quotes for you to read. Okay. Quotes. It was him who lowered his voice then, always fighting me, resisting me. It's as if you want me to beg. Is that something you'd enjoy? My, me begging? His voice sounded so dot 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 intimate, hushed. But it was his next words that scattered my thoughts all over the place. Is that what this is? You like bringing me to my knees? Yeah, that's it. That's kind of hot. I know, but this was at the beginning. Whoa, this wasn't even like sexy. Part. Him saying you want me to beg to come to the wedding, and he's saying that to her, and I was like, whoa, that's why is he being place. sexual when she's not even consenting? Yeah, to him being like that to her. It's kind of weird. Kind of weird. Like he's just assuming she'll like it. Which That'd be is... hotter in a sexual context. Yeah, just but it wasn't. The they were at the coffee shop or something. Weird. Yeah, it was weird. I was like, mm, that kind of makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. So this is when they are making out outside of the wedding. Ooh. Just read the highlight parts. If I snuck my hand under your dress, how wet would I find you, baby? <laughs> that not now why because I wouldn't be able to help myself and the first time I'm in inside of you it's not going to be a quick fuck against a wall I was like Jesus <gasps> whoa this is, okay, so it's just this is the third one you blow my goddamn mind <laughs> <laughs> My rules, my world, he breathed, those ocean blue eyes capturing my gaze like they've never had before. When I least expect it, I find you ready to dynamite your way right into my heart, as if you hadn't done that already. Dynamite your way right into my heart. I just made that. <laughs> as if you hadn't already dismantled me for anybody else. As if I wasn't at your mercy. At your mercy. <laughs> so dramatic. Good drama. Uh, who would ever, things like that when quotes are put in books, who in their right mind would ever say that no. to another person? No. Let me dynamite my, my way into your heart. Yeah. You dynamite your way in my heart. Anyway. So, that is Spanish book. Love Deception. Love it. It was a silly book. I don't think I hated it as much as everyone made it seem like they hated it, but I was definitely not obsessed. Yeah. This book was like almost a copy of The Hating Game. Uh -huh. It was very, very, very similar. The Hating Game has a better storyline. This book has more sex scenes and it is more sexual and mm -hmm. dirty than The Hating Game, but it just depends what you want. Do you want better characters and a better arc or do you want um, sex scenes? But take that um, with a grain of salt because he did say, I want you to melt me. So, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. But I think if you want the best of both worlds, go read The Love Hypothesis. Honestly, at this point, this trope has become so common. Oh, yeah. Especially with a lot of new stories. So it has to be really, really good for me to want to reach for it. So, yeah. are we ready to rate? Do it. Okay. So, um, how we rate our books is basically... How drunk would you have to be to say that you are obsessed with this book, basically? Mm -hmm. We rate this book from slightly buzzed, yes. tipsy, drunk, stumbling, blackout. Uh, one to five stars, obviously slightly buzzed being the best, mm -hmm. and blackout being the worst. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I think it would be like tipsy, just boring, a little bit drunk. Okay. That's my, that's my rating. So, so good, tipsy and a half. Yeah, I would say- Tipsy and a drink. <laughs> if this book sounded somewhat interesting to you, go read The Hating Game or Love Hypothesis and stuff. So yeah, that was my book of the week. Yay. Yay, amazing. Thanks. Good job, I loved it. Go pick up It Ends With Us. Mm -hmm. And don't go pick up <laughs> <Just> Love Deception. <laughs>
Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow us on TikTok, on Instagram, mm -hmm. on YouTube. And come yeah. back next week for my book. Exactly. We're, We're really good. excited. Yes. Cannot wait. All right, guys. Cannot wait. See you next week on Drink, Drink Read, Fabio. Have a good night. Have a good night. No!